I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we're all about spring living with the bright, the airy, and of course, the beautiful. We're in Venice Beach, California for a peek inside one of designer Tatum Kendrick's newest projects. Plus an iconic mid-century marvel built into the hillside. But first we join author and social media influencer Summer Rain Oaks to see how nature blooms inside her Williamsburg loft. I never expected to move into the city and it's a little bit of a shock. So I decided to bring the outdoors in. Welcome to Open House NYC. Today I'm coming to you from this full floor apartment over Park Avenue South, right where Nomad, Flatiron, and Gramercy converge. From the entry gallery with its stone flooring, you step into this corner great room. Check out the loft-like flow between the living and dining areas. The open chef's kitchen is defined by custom cabinetry and a stone top breakfast bar. High ceilings and a near continuous line of windows keep it all bright and airy, while elegant hardwood floors and the gas fireplace add elements of warmth. The master suite is a glamorous refuge with its dressing room and marble and glass bathroom. One of three bedrooms in this over 3,000 square foot home. Well, today we are celebrating spring-themed design, so it's perfect that we're starting things off with Summer Rain Oaks at her plant-filled loft in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Summer Rain is an author with an interest in reconnecting people to nature. Her home is a beautiful ode to the outdoors. She's created a verdant landscape where seemingly every space is adorned with plant life. It's a serene and inspiring space for her and her pet hen, Kippy. Take a look. I'm Summer Rain Oaks. Welcome to Williamsburg, Brooklyn. I'm an environmental scientist and entomologist by training, and I never expected to move in the city, and it's a little bit of a shock. So I decided to bring the outdoors in. So come see my little oasis of green in the city. Hey guys, welcome to my home, and you might be hearing my little foster hen, Kippy. I started living with her 11 months ago after I found her as an orphan, and she is a wonderful roommate. Plus, she gives me fresh eggs. So my space opens up to the dining room area. I like this piece of art right here, and I call it living art. It was something that I built with my dad, so it was a great father-daughter DIY, and this is a mason jar garden. I not only love being surrounded by plants, but it's great that this could act as an art piece as well. The kitchen is one of my favorite places, and it's definitely a quirky kitchen, but this is something that I made all my own, so I wanted to go overly green, so you'll see a lot of plants, but I also painted this a nice spring green. You'll see that my windowsills are full of plants because it's a great place to get light. And I have some in terrariums, which is a neat little hack, especially if you want to grow plants that need a little bit more humidity or need a microcosm that you wouldn't typically have if you were just growing them in your home. I love the 1950s sink and of course my cutting board, which I do a lot of cooking, and I conveniently cut a little hole here for compost. To begin with, I have a hammock, which is one of my favorite places to come and relax and also read a book. And quite frankly, I think it's the next best thing to a fireplace to just lose yourself and forget that you're in the city. The pillar is not only great for hanging a hammock, but also lots of plants. You'll notice some trellises on the walls. These were actually tossed out on the side of the street and I picked them up. I mean, New Yorkers throw out the craziest things. And so I just painted them up and started to grow plants on them. So this is my couch area and it's another great place to relax. And I love all the color in this corner of the room. I have a lot of hand embroidered pillows from India and other places. And of course, if you look close enough, you'll be able to see my chicken in her nesting box. <laughs> She's pretty much taken over this whole couch area. And voila, Kippy laid her daily egg. So this is my bedroom, and it's probably one of the greenest rooms in the house. And it's complements to the sub-irrigated wall over here to the left. 
It waters from the bottom up and it automatically waters itself, which is super helpful because there's about 80 plants in the wall. And on the base of it, there's a lot of Sansevieria or snake plants, which just are plants that really grow upright, so they're perfect for the base of the green wall. You could tell that this is an old closet because you could see how some plants are growing up on the rod where I used to hang my clothes. I have such great light coming in from my southwest facing windows that it's a perfect growing space. So I turned that into a garden as well. Some of these plants over here have the best view of New York City. Hopefully you enjoyed my A Little Oasis in the City and it inspires you to bring a little bit more green into your life. Summer rain proves that even in the most urban environments, the outdoors can always be brought in. And Kippy is definitely a first for us on Open House. Coming up right after the break, a mid-century architectural masterpiece just off the Sunset Strip. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're at a mid-century modern property dubbed the Banta House for the architect Richard Banta who built it for himself in 1959. This eye-catching hillside gem is supported by zigzagging red stilts and shows off many of Banta's unique signatures, including a pleated roof and floor-to-ceiling glass sliders that frame city and canyon views. Let's take a closer look. Hey there, I'm Julia DeLorme with Sotheby's International Realty, and I'm going to take you on a tour of a prestigious architectural home in the hills known as the Banta House. The Banta House is a sensational piece of living art. But what's so special about Richard Banta? Why is he famous? I'll tell you why. As a notable California architect, Richard Banta had a sensitivity to sight, landscape, and human scale. His brand of modernism blurred the boundaries of indoors and outdoors, which is what defines California mid-century architecture. But perhaps what makes this home extra special is that it was Banta's personal residence. But enough about Banta. Let's go see the home already. Starting with the entry, you'll notice a pleated roof, and true to the living art style of this home, these angles cast a unique shadow that changed throughout the day. And with an open post and beam floor plan like this, with floor to ceiling glass sliders, you can't help but take advantage of the uninterrupted views that stretch from the entry all the way to the terrace. And connecting all that glory are these amazing Brazilian tiger mahogany floor panels. Oh, and you're going to love this! This custom kitchen island won an award by Interior Design Magazine for this ingenious hideaway stovetop by Miele. In this home, less is more, hence the minimal nature and clean lines throughout. In this master suite, retro is everything. The bed is framed by a generous mirror that runs the full length of the wall. Not only does it give the room a feeling of airy openness, but it allows for lovely vistas from every angle. The master bath adjacent shares the same sleekness as the master, but these angles in here are quite unique as seen here with these exclusive 3D luxury tiles installed throughout. Richard Banta paid close attention to the engineering of the structure and added iconic red steel beams, not only to last a lifetime and beyond, but to add a sexy flair to this timeless design. Banta's architectural masterpiece adds a pop of bold art to these hills. It's no secret that this house is charming in size, and the focus is all about the views. From this enclave, there really is no bad seat in the house. And don't forget to take advantage of this prime outdoor entertaining terrace. Here, the cityscape acts as the perfect backdrop for any soiree. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful tour of this iconic property celebrated by artists and architects worldwide. Cheers to living uniquely. Bye. It's always so fascinating to see the homes that architects design for themselves, right? Coming up next, we are in Miami for a look at some tips and trends in the real estate market.
Welcome back. The real estate market is complicated and can be daunting, especially to newcomers. For Coldwell Banker, mother-daughter team Lizzie Pardo and Gabby Bayer, real estate is a family affair and has made them among the top real estate professionals in all of South Florida. Now we join them in sunny Miami for a refresher course on some key things you should always remember, whether you're buying or selling. Take a look. My name is Lizzie Padro. And I'm her daughter, Gabby Bayer. And we're both with Cobalt Banker Residential Real Estate. I've been a part of the Global Luxury Division since 2005. Gabrielle helps me in so many ways with showings, adding clients to our client list, with marketing, social media. And she's really a great supporter of all of my real estate efforts, and I do the same with her. Working with my mom is really great. I looked up to her and have watched her work in the industry for so many years, so I'm definitely learning a lot. Thank you, Gabby. Something I learned from my mom at a really young age was the three biggest rules in real estate, location, location, location. But there are other things that both buyers and sellers do need to remember. Here's some advice we always give to buyers. Number one, make sure you're financially qualified. Whether that means that you have enough money for a down payment or that you are going to be qualified for a mortgage. And number two, it is very important for them to know exactly what they're looking for. Whether they're looking to be in an A-plus school district or a certain distance from work. And number three, make sure you're working with a professional realtor who you can trust and connect with. If you're selling your property, I always advise you want to make it available to agents and prospects. And number two, it is very important to have your home look spectacular. If that means putting on a fresh coat of paint, decluttering, or cleaning. And now that your property looks the price, trust your realtor, they know the market. Cobalt Banker is a globally recognized and trusted brand that has been in the business for over 100 years. This makes our exposure second to none. Not only does Cobalt Banker provide agents with brand recognition, we also have a powerful network of agents around the world. Traditionally, the best time to buy is in the spring, but because of our gorgeous weather, we have people coming not only from around the country, but from all around the world. That makes the market great all year round. One of our listings is a modern two-bedroom, two-bathroom condo. It is on the 29th floor and it has gorgeous unobstructed views of Biscayne Bay. The unit is about 1,300 square feet and has large wraparound balconies. It's the perfect place to take in the Miami lifestyle. I think it's a great opportunity for a first time buyer because of the location and the amenities that the building offers. This property is a single family home located in one of the most prestigious areas of Miami. It is a six bedroom, five and a half bath, sitting on an acre of land. The home is filled with fine finishes. It's a beautiful place for entertaining with wide open spaces and an easy flow to the outside. And the outside is true tropical paradise. It doesn't matter if you're buying or selling. There's a Cobalt Banker real estate professional near you. Just head to CobaltBanker.com. Coming back to the break, we are at a stunning island paradise originally envisioned by Frank Lloyd Wright. We'll see you in just a bit. Welcome back. Now we're at a private island estate in Mayapak, New York. The fact that it's an island less than 60 miles north of the city is rare enough, but when you add the fact that the homes on the island were based on the plans of none other than Frank Lloyd Wright, well, that just takes things to a whole new level of remarkable. Hi, everyone. My name is Chadwick Chochi. I'm the founder of Chilton & Chadwick. We're at a very special place today in Mayopac, New York, on Lake Mayopac. We're here to see an 11-acre private heart-shaped island with two Frank Lloyd Wright designed houses on it called Petra Island. With this island, getting there is half the fun. Hop on board. And we're in the middle of Lake Mayo Pack now with the island right in front of us, the beautiful Frank Lloyd Wright design house jutting out into the middle of it. Welcome to Petra Island. Let's take a closer look at this amazing estate. 
With the waterfall as well as the rocks in the walls, you can immediately see some of Frank Lloyd Wright's common motifs. The current owner built this house to Frank Lloyd Wright's exact design specifications, and today it's known as the Massaro House. One of Frank Lloyd Wright's major design philosophies was the theory of embrace and release, and you can see that with this house too. As he squeezes you into the main entrance outside, that leads to this beautiful, expansive, light-filled foyer. This house is built on a grid pattern. You can see it in the floors, and you can see it in the almost 40 skylights as well, including this one above the main foyer. Frank Lloyd Wright was famously inspired by nature, and in fact, he practiced what was called organic architecture, with the seamless incorporation of nature into his structures. Here, he designed a house to be built around this incredible rock formation. Frank Lloyd Wright's favorite color was Cherokee Red, and you can see that throughout his architecture. You can also see it on the floors here, both inside as well as on the decking outside. We're here in the library and the living room, and what's really special about this room is that at sunset, the light will hit the right side and the left side of the television, but not the television itself. Frank Lloyd Wright was famously a huge fan of movies, and so he designed this for a projector, but we find that it works just as well for modern flat screen televisions. This awesome living area always reminds me of being on a yacht. You have water to your right, to your left, as well as a beautiful fireplace focal point. Lake Mayopac is a beautiful spring-fed lake where you can sail, jet ski, or anything your heart desires on a hot summer day. And the views of the lake can be enjoyed from over 4,000 square feet of outdoor decking. There are many subtle design details to be enjoyed throughout this house, including the waves built into the copper flashing. They were designed to mimic the ripples of the lake. You know, you really feel like you're in a world of your own when you're on this island. But the reality is, you're only a 15 minute helicopter ride away from Manhattan. And you can leave from your very own rooftop helipad. The original owners gave Frank Lloyd Wright a mandate, create your masterpiece. We think he came close to doing that right here on Petra Island. We thank you for joining us and we truly hope you enjoyed this tour. Has anything inspired you so far? Well, be sure to check out our curated collection of decor ideas on Amazon. To shop the look, just visit amazon.com slash shop slash open house TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are in Venice Beach, California for a look at one of designer Tatum Kendrick's newest projects. Tatum is a believer in the Japanese aesthetic of wabi-sabi, which celebrates nature's imperfections. Let's check out how she incorporated this philosophy into her client's home. Hey guys, welcome. My name is Tatum Kendrick. I'm the founder of Studio Hoos, an interior design firm based in Los Angeles. And today I wanted to show you one of our modern projects that we did in Venice Beach that really exemplifies the indoor-outdoor living in Southern California. Come follow me. We designed this entry to complement the architecture, which has beautiful bones. It's really warm woods, great light. We wanted the furniture to be not overpowering. We wanted it to stay minimal. And this floating console that's behind me is made out of natural walnut. And we had a little bit of fun with the art wall. And we collected a bunch of pieces that really meant something to the client. Keeping in theme with the natural tones and the wabi-sabi, you're going to love what I did in the kitchen. Come with me. On the way to the kitchen, we walked through the open dining room where we put together these beautiful 1950s Italian dining chairs and this yummy caramel leather with this walnut dining table. Again, the tones are really warm and bronzy. And I love doing dining chairs that are super comfortable and allow you to linger for long dinner parties. We decided to break up the long table with two smaller chandeliers that reflect the light. After dinner, you're going to want to relax and unwind in the great room. It's awesome. I was so excited to design this house that had such great architectural bones. One of my favorite features are the pocketing doors that essentially just open up the entire corner of the house to the outside. 
Everyone thinks interior design is fun and fluffy, and it is fun, but the process of getting there is not always a straight line. And this outdoor space that we designed was kind of a nail biter. We designed the masonry of the outdoor fireplace and then we had to crane in this pergola from the alley and fasten it to the house without damaging anything in the process. And finally, the last piece is the quintessential bohemian element, a Brazilian hammock. It has a beautiful lace detail that makes it look as good as it feels to swing in the breeze and watch the Venice Beach sunset. Thanks again for joining me today. I really love touring you around, one of my favorite projects we've done in Venice Beach. My name's Tatum Kendrick, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?